let's talk about if this ski is living up to what Line themselves wanted to create and how they talk about it on the website. Deep cuts it starts with. Cut, slash and burn the blade and the blade will reignite euphoria of the turn. Leave only deep cut trenches in its wake. And a shit eating grin on your face. Reignite the euphoria of the turn. Yeah, I think that could be true. Like if you only ski, like I used to do, freestyle skis in the park, yes, it could reignite your stoke for the turn. Truthful statement. Uh, an aggressive and agile shape allows the blade to harness and match power and energy and transfer it into every turn. Yes, they turn well. I bet they would turn well on ice too, but it was hard to find ice today. But you gotta be strong though, a pretty strong skier. Because when they are 95 underfoot, and this short radius, you really got to push them down on the edge because the wider the ski, the more leverage it gets and uh, basically the, the more pressure you got to put onto the skis. Featuring a versatile 95 millimeter waist and massive shovel. Um, blah, blah, blah. The turning radius can be described as tight. Designed to carve like nothing you ever skied before allow you to rip up the entire mountain with ease. It is true if you only skied freestyle skis, this will be the sk a ski that turned like nothing you ever skied before. But if you compare it to a slalom or GS ski that is designed just to carve, um, which is something sort of new to me, they do turn better. But these ones definitely, you know, would maybe carve really well also in the off-piste when it's cruddy and stuff because they are pretty wide. And today when it's slushy, they're pretty rad skis for slush, slush calves. Because on a real uh, skinny carving ski, you can sink down a little bit too much. So. Uh, so I'd actually say as far as marketing lingo goes, they've been quite truthful with this ski. Like I'm pretty stoked on it. I've had a blast skiing them. Just looking at them and they do really look like my uh, Atomic S9 slalom skis. A little bit of a tail with sort of a swallow tail. Thanks to the tail, it feels a little bit softish back here. Maybe it allows you to skid out more or slash or so lines are saying themselves. The nose, let's see what that is like. It's definitely a little bit soft, uh, maybe to here somewhere. The rock, I think, finishes there, goes back a little bit, and then it feels quite stiff under the ski boot. Weight-wise, they they aren't light skis. They are uh, 2,050 grams, so it's some for sure. But I think that's an advantage for what you want to do with this ski. You want to turn sharp all over the mountain, maybe do some tricks. I wouldn't say they turn as quickly as my S9s with 13 meter radius. They're more like my X9s that has 15 or so. I think maybe the truth about this ski's radius is 15. Maybe 14 and a half, I'm not sure. So we just got to the Elf Brown Park, it's three jumps, a couple of other features. We'll see what it feels like to yeah, carve into these jumps, do some spins, and later on do some switch spins too. Let's hit it. Woo! Shifty works. Oh, I'm on top. I felt pretty good. Wow, over rotated. So first time we tried a little backflip, it felt pretty good. Um, I was too fast, it wasn't the ski's fault. And then carving into the 540, felt pretty decent. And it's quite nice that you don't have to edge so much, but yet, get a decent amount of schwung. So that was a good time. And skiing switch in the switch five, like they do feel a little weird with the long noses, but 
yeah, like it works. A little loose. Let's see if the skis will butter. I've already leaned forward. The noses are quite stiff. So on my nose but the three, I'm gonna have a little bit of a pop. So I'm like the feet, so I'm a bit more in the air basically. So I don't have to bend the ski so much. But the tail's still soft enough. I'm gonna try to really flex them into a nice switch tail. But the five on the last hit. Let's give it a go. I feel fine. Tail to nose butter. Oh, I bonked it and missed the landing again. So Rory just asked me, Jens, would you buy this ski? I'm a little bit on a maybe. In like, I would like to have them. I could see a fair use of them. I don't think I would ride the park on them necessarily. I'd prefer something um, more twin tip like or like a normal freestyle ski. But another question I often think in these reviews is like, who is this skier for? And I think this skier could be great for someone like a ski instructor who also likes freestyle skiing and like free ride skiing. Like back in the day when I was doing normal ski school work, on and off, like then it would have been rad. Like I would have loved to instruct in these skis because they're playful, they turn sharp. I could have demonstrated good turns in basically any conditions. I think it's good with this ski that it could inspire more freestyle skiers to care about their turns because skiing gets much more fun when you learn to turn really nice. I like where this is going and I truly hope that we see some more innovative shapes in the ski industry. I would love to see more like 100 millimeter wide uh, twin tip skis that are a little bit, could be a little bit directional, maybe not this directional, with a tight radius. I'd love to see more products in this direction. Thank you very much for watching and please leave us a comment below if you liked it. Yeah, give it a little like and subscribe and also you can comment what aspects of skis you'd like us to review and look into in the future. See you in the next one.